It's time for The Line of Fire with your host, activist, author, international speaker, and theologian, Dr. Michael Brown, your voice of moral, cultural, and spiritual revolution. Michael Brown is the director of the Coalition of Conscience and president of Fire School of Ministry. Get into The Line of Fire now by calling 866-34-TRUTH. That's 866-34-TRUTH. Here again is Dr. Michael Brown. How about this for a headline today? The NFL takes over the leadership of Chicago, Los Angeles, New York, and other major cities. Would that not be a fascinating headline? And why would you say that? Because crime and poverty is at an all-time high in those cities. And look what just happened. The NFL... The Giants just fired their coach, Joe Judge. The Vikings just fired Mike Zimmer and their general manager, Rick Spielman. The Bears just fired their coach and GM. The Dolphins just fired their coach in a surprise, and it looked like he was turning things around down there. The Broncos just parted ways with their coach after the third consecutive losing season. Year after year after year, things have gone south in these major cities. So what if the headline today read in the paper, The NFL, NFL teams in specific, took over the leadership of Chicago. Fire them. Am I off my rocker? Am I all wet? I'm not Dr. Michael Brown, but it's an honor to sit in for him. I'm Stu Epperson, and Dr. Brown is out today. We're so grateful for him and the ministry of the Line of Fire, and I'm tickled to death to be able to sit in the honored spot here in in the truth booth in the line of fire, and I'm inviting you to call and tell me why the NFL shouldn't take over these major cities. Please, call and tell me. And whoever gives me the best answer is going to win two tickets. Two tickets. And I got an update on Dr. Brown I'm going to give you shortly. Keep prayers coming in for him. Now, this is the other topic I want to talk about. So the first topic is, should the NFL take over these cities? They're failing. Well, Stu, what are you doing getting into politics? I'm not getting into politics. God has given me, the money God has given me is his money. And when I pay my taxes, there is stewardship. And where are they going? And if I keep paying the same taxes to the same government that's that's doing the same nonsense and failing, look, let's put it this way. If I'm a season ticket holder for the Denver Broncos, I love going to the games. They're fun. I'm paying X amount of thousands of dollars a year to go to the games. to to have great seats, to have fun, food, camaraderie. But I'm going, there's a scoreboard in my team, I'm going to win. And I expect them to put a winning roster together. I expect them to put a winning head coach together, a winning coaching staff, general manager, back office, front office, all of the above. And yet they lose games. So what do they do? They fire the coach. So what do we do in Chicago? We fire the mayor, fire the aldermen, fire the councilmen. What do we do in Baltimore? Crime goes up. Tonight, someone will be executed in Cold blood in Chicago. What happens? NFL, you lose games, you get fired. They bring in a coach who wins. Chicago, I'm suggesting the NFL takes over Chicago or a specific team, and they let the Chicago Bears leadership take over Chicago, the city leadership, and they fire those people. I'm not saying Republican. If they're if they're if they're if you're losing lives and being murdered, then you should be fired. It's common sense. Tell me I'm all wet. Tell me where I'm wrong. At 866-34-TRUTH, 866-348-7884, what should the church do about all this escalating crime? I got the statistics right here, and they are worse than I thought. I almost didn't want our producers to pick these out for me, to print this. It's evil. Smash and grab retailers. People are just going in. I guarantee you they're not looting NFL stadiums. I guarantee you they're not going to the Panthers, crashing through the gates, and looting all of their souvenir shops. And all their stores. I guarantee you they're making nice coin there. And if they don't win games, they fire their coach. So why shouldn't the NFL take over these cities? 866-34-TRUTH. 866-348-7884. Now, what's at stake here? Your question, your answer. Someone give me a real good answer to this. Someone help me see clearly on this. And I'm going to give you our paste. This is going to open up a can of worms. I'm sorry. Grayson, our producer, he's in there with gritted teeth. He's ready to get your calls. He's we got some lines open here on the line of fire. 
Stu Epperson in for Dr. Michael Brown, 866-34-TRUTH, 866-348-7884. I got two tickets right here in my hand for the Wake Forest Duke basketball game tonight at 7 o'clock. The game is sold out, but I'm holding two tickets, quite valuable tickets, and I'm going to give them to whoever calls in with a good answer to why don't we let the NFL. Here's what here's how this happened. I'm going to tell you more about how this happened in a second and how, how wh- why, Stu, are you so worked up about this? I got a 19-year-old, no, a 21-year-old daughter. Wow, how did that go by so fast? And she is in New York City, and she's walking on the streets at nighttime. And her mom and I are just like, wow, we're people of prayer, but sometimes it's hit your knees and pray. It's pitch black, and literally New York is letting criminals run the streets. You get turned in for <coughs> for a felony in New York, you're out on the streets the next day. People are getting murdered. She's had friends getting beat up in the subway, being shot cold blood in New York City. So my thing is, what in the world? Fire them. Fire them all. Bring in new coaches, new leaders. Let the NFL take over New York City. They won't tolerate that. You win a few games in the NFL, you're out. And they bring in winners to get to the Super Bowl. So that's just kind of coming out of that. A couple other things I want to share with you. But I'm going to give away these Duke tickets. But here's the dilemma on the Duke tickets. And, Grayson, I don't know how much time we have on this segment. Uh, this segment, So I want to get to some calls, too, in a little bit. But we got, we got a few minutes. Okay. Wake Forest plays Duke tonight. Coach K's last dance, his final tour. The last time Coach K coaches in the Joel Coliseum in Winston-Salem, not even two miles from where I'm sitting. But there's a caveat. I know someone out there wants these two tickets. You can call me at 866-34-TRUTH right now. You make a, you, you kind of make a case against or for what I'm suggesting with the NFL, or an NFL team even, taking over the cities that are failing and, and, and straighten things out because kids are dying, being killed. You make your case. Go back and forth with me a little bit on this. What is a believer to do? That's very important here on this show especially. But I'll give you two tickets to the sold-out game tonight. But the caveat is this. You have to show a vaccination card to get in the game. Number one, the Wake Forest University just announced this a couple days ago. Number two, you have to either show a vaccination card or show a negative COVID test. Now, the reason that I'm bringing this up is because I'm going to give you these two tickets, and I want to bless a listener of the line of fire with these two tickets. If you're anywhere in the North Carolina area, we have listeners all over the state, all over the country really listen to the line of fire. Those of you who are out of state, where you can enjoy the conversation. You can even weigh in if you think it's a bad idea, a good idea that Wake shows is requiring ticket holders to show a proof of vaccination card or a negative COVID test proof to get into the Wake Forest Duke basketball game tonight. Game sold out. I just know that it's made a little tricky for me. I've talked to people. I talked to a pastor earlier. I was blessing a pastor with four tickets, and he called me back upset. He said, Stu, I can't go. And again, I'm not getting into the pro-vax, anti-vax, but some people are having a really hard time with this. Another guy called me. He says, I'm trying to find a COVID test. I'm perfectly healthy, but I haven't been vaccinated, but I don't have anything. I already had it, you know, like a month ago. I'm trying to find a legitimate test so I can get into the game tonight. I'm already a season ticket holder, Stu. What do I do? And I'm like, why are you calling me? Maybe you can call me now, those of you who have an opinion about this. And I won't answer quite as articulately or brilliantly as the inestimable Dr. Michael Brown, but I'd love to hear from you at 866-34-TRUTH. Hey, at least I used a big word, Grayson, right? 866-348-7884. Do you think, what if you have a conviction against getting vaccinated if you're a Christian? Do you think it's fair for an ace, a major ACC team on the biggest night of their season, Coach K's final night coaching Duke against Wake in Winston-Salem, North Carolina, do you think it's fair for them to require a vaccination card for people to get in the game? 866-34-TRUTH. And, hey, give me a good answer to that. I got two Wake Forest Duke tickets to give to you. Now, again, you have to be vaccinated and show that card tonight to get in, or you have to have a proof of a of a negative test, okay? you got to study hard for those tests, but you got to get a proof of a negative test to, to use these two tickets. 
So I'm just, I mean, it's in all fairness to you, I'm not going to give these away to someone who's excited. Maybe they're a big Wake fan. They want to see, and maybe you're coming from, who knows where you're listening, from the Lake Norman area, or maybe you're coming from Durham to come see Duke play Wake tonight, and you get these tickets, but then you're not vaccinated and you haven't had a test. So you're not going to go to the game because that's the rule. Do you think that's fair? Do you think it's heavy-handed? I, you know, one a friend of mine, I called him. He says, don't you think, Stu, that's a good thing to do just to make sure no one's sick? I said, well, yeah, but people have common sense. They're not going to go sick to a game, are they? He said, Stu, you wouldn't believe the kind of crazy folks I've seen at these, some of these games. So that was his perspective. I want to hear your perspective, and I want to unload a couple tickets to the Wake Duke basketball game tonight. Kind of a cool thing. These might be the last two tickets left in town. Grayson, we got a, we got a hot one right here. So the toll-free number to call in is 866-34-TRUTH, 866-348-7884. And then there's that NFL issue. Why don't we just let the NFL take over these cities? They're about winning games. We're tired of losing lives. Let's kind of say, hey, we got a little solution here. Am I off my rocker? Let's see what Rebecca says, a Virginia caller, to the line of fire. I'm Stu Epperson in for Dr. Michael Brown. Got an update on him coming up in just a little bit. But, Rebecca, welcome to the show. Hi, Stu. How are you? Great. Good to hear your voice. What do you think about all this? Well, you know what? The NFL, if they were a little bit more patriotic like they used to be, um, I mean, at this point, I, I think Mickey Mouse could do a better job than these people in the city are doing. Yeah. But I guess that better than nothing. Yeah. Um, well, look, 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 the NFL – the NFL is very politically correct. I mean, they're very – I'm completely – and you've heard on this program, I'm sure, Dr. Brown, they've missed the boat on a lot of even moral ethical issues. But, hey, if they could stop crime, I mean, people are being murdered. Right. I, mean, I mean, these little no, six-year-olds are getting killed in drive-by shootings, and they don't even have a chance to grow up and form a worldview about this stuff. It's awful. It, it really is awful. And as far as people getting sick, People that have been vaccinated are actually the ones getting the Omicron. The tests are false positive, false negatives. The tests are a joke. Wow. All these mandates. I feel like we're living in Nazi Germany. So what if, really someone, what if someone goes to that game and they have the tickets, they show, they show a, 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 a negative test that's legitimate, but they've got the Omicron because somehow right. it didn't detect it. That's it. Oh, it's well, there's just, cruises. Yeah. There's been evidence like, um, and news about cruises that have been – completely shut down and they're full of people and they all have a oh my soul okay yeah. it's happening the cruises yeah. what about this thing how are we going to fix our cities what is the church to do rebecca thanks for your call we got more calls calling lined up at 866-34 truth god bless you rebecca thanks for listening thank you Change the world. amy cabo and the cure this show deals with suffering the tenacity of the human spirit and the courage to keep moving forward with the help of God. I want people to know that there's hope. I was forced into my abortion because I didn't think I had a choice. I want people to know there's choices. Well, Amy, my heart is breaking. I just want you to know that I love you and I thank God for you. Amy Cabo and The Cure. Every Saturday at 1 Eastern on The Truth Network. The Truth Network would like to say muchas gracias to our amigos at Pancho Villa's Mexican Restaurant for being awesome partners. Pancho Villa's serving all of Mexico's best platters. Stop by and bring the whole family for a cultural experience that's not only delicious, but also authentic. My daughter Joy loves the ACP and the cheese dip. Me encanta la ACP y el queso. Make it a Mexican night at Pancho Villa's, the best Mexican food in the triad. Winston-Salem and High Point, mypanchovillas.com. We live in an on-demand world. Time, weather, meals, and content. That's why the Truth Network has the Truth Podcast Network. Some of your favorite Truth Network programs, plus some that are podcast only. Rich content that is rich in the word. The Truth Network. The Truth Network's Finding Purpose podcast is a ministry for men. Pastor Russ Andrews speaks directly to the masculine heart, and guys learn how to be Christian without being religious. Check out the Finding Purpose podcast with Pastor Russ Andrews at truthnetwork.com. Hi, I'm Tom Booth from Bible for Breakfast. Well, all of our entries from last month's Ministry of the Month are right here. Now it's time to find out who is the grand prize winner. Mixing them all up, good luck, everyone. 
Congratulations to Vicki Brown. Vicki listens to The Truth You Talk. Every month we highlight one of our wonderful truth partners in ministries. Remember, it's not whether you win or lose, but thanks be to God, He gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. The Truth. Fire we want, for fire we It's The Line of Fire with your host, Dr. Michael Brown. Get into The Line of Fire now by calling 866-34-TRUTH. Here again is Dr. Michael Brown. Yeah, so there I am watching TV. It's the height of all the football games, the craze, the NFL playoffs, who's in, who's out, wild cards. Big announcement comes on. The Denver Broncos fire their head coach. Well, why did they fire their head coach? They didn't feel good about him. They didn't like his tone of voice, he, his wardrobe, all those leisure suits. No, he lost games. He didn't win the games. They're not contending for the Super Bowl. So then my wife, we're watching TV. She flips over to another channel, and it's heartbreaking. Like, it's almost tear-jerking. You see them talking about Chicago and talking about how the, the crime rate is murdered. You want to get killed? Go to inner-city Chicago. It's awful. The, it, it's, these are the worst-run cities in America, according to an article I'm looking at by The Hill. New York, Los Angeles, Chicago, Portland, Washington, Philadelphia, San Francisco. The people are in debt up to their nose. The political parties that run those cities, the political leaders, and by the way, this isn't a Republican-Democrat show, okay? You hire a Democrat that'll stop the murder in Chicago, let's put them in there. But my thing is, let's put the NFL in there. Because the mayor and the aldermen and the congressman and anyone else in Chicago who's running the place is they're losing, they're losing not not just you know uh, their little uh, whatever games they play or their little bill here and there they're losing lives. Kids are being slaughtered in cold blood on the streets. Murder. The murder rate's higher than it has ever been in Chicago. How about let's go to Baltimore? Let's take a trip there. You want to? So my point is, whoever's in control, let's put the NFL in control because they'll fire the people. And they will prevent the murder. So Rebecca called in, just our last caller from Virginia. She said, look, NFL's got some wonky views on stuff, definitely some anti-family stuff that we talk about on this network, on this show. But you know what? If they could stop the murder, people, you know, killing people, the crime in inner city Chicago, put them in charge. What do you think? 866-348-7884. Stu Epperson Jr. in for my good friend, the legendary Dr. Michael Brown, the regular host of the Line of Fire. He is recovering, doing much better. Go to his Facebook page. Check it out for updates. He is excited to be back with you very soon. Keep your prayers rolling in and upward for Dr. Brown. And I'm giving away two Wake Forest Duke tickets. Game sold out tonight. But this opens up another can of worms. You got to be proof of vaccination card to get in the game. And... You've got to or or show a negative COVID test, I guess, within 48 hours. So there's some people upset about that. I don't know why they call me, but I'm asking you, is that a good idea, a bad idea? What are your feelings about that? And why not let someone like the NFL, one of these teams, take over inner city Chicago? At least kids aren't going to be murdered every night in cold blood. Retailers aren't going to be looted. This smash and grab is unbelievable. Have you watched these? What news do you watch? Are you seeing these people? They're tearing up retail stores and just taking whatever they want. And the cops are told to stand down. It's awful. So, as a parent of a 21-year-old in New York City who can barely get on the train, where people are being raped in in open daylight, broad daylight, killed, knifed, and everything, because they're not putting criminals in jail, they're letting them right out. They're letting them right out of the can to run out and do it again. And it's day after day after day. So let's get the New York Giants. They just fired their coach. Let's get them to run New York City. And and no more death. Get, get, you know, clean it up. Do what it takes. Let's talk to Paul, another caller from Virginia. We got another guy on the line, too. We got a Jay calling in. And your your call is important to us as well. 866-348-7884. 866-34-TRUTH. We'd love to hear your perspective. Maybe you think I am all wet, which wouldn't be the first time. And then what should the church do about all this? Paul, jump on in here. Okay, can you hear me? <clears throat> Got you loud and clear. Okay, I'm calling about a book called COVID-19 and the Global Predators. Okay. We Are the Prey by Dr. Peter Bregg and his wife, Ginger. Oh, wow. The book has been meticulously researched, and it has 
introductions by leading COVID-19 physicians, Peter McCullough, mm -hmm. Elizabeth Ballett, and Vlad uh, Vladimir, which he goes by Zeb Zelenko. Okay. Now, as your last caller from Virginia stated, these tests are a joke. These tests are up to what could be 80% inaccurate. Oh, my. They are using a PCR test. A lot of people are writing and talking about this. Dr. Robert Malone, Dr. Peter yep. McCullough, on and on and on and on and on. Right. But they're not getting much airtime on the now, major networks, right? I am not. No, they're not. Yeah. I've stopped watching the networks because it's propaganda. Yeah. Okay, so what's we the name of the book again, Paul? To Paul, Paul, what's the name of the book? COVID-19 and the global predators, okay. we are the prey. Okay, now, by and the I way, by the way, so you think it's a good of, idea or a bad idea for a, a pro or amateur uh, college athletics uh, uh, event to require a, a vaccination card or a uh, proof of uh, negative test, good or bad? I can't say it's too complicated. Because okay. <laughs> you got the, a couple hours, right? The, yeah. Well, let, let me get. Let me do this. Let me recommend. Uh, let me write. I've written down the name of this book. Thing. I yeah. want to say a site called Real Real R E A L not Rare dot com. Okay. Because I'm not anti vax In fact, I wish I had done more research. Yeah. Okay. So what's the website again, Paul? Paul, what's the what's the website again? I got to get some other folks in. But what's Real the... Real Not Rare dot com. Okay. Real and Not I'm Rare. Tired of the government. Okay. Real, not rare. Okay. Okay. No, what I about what? Okay. Should be mandated. Yeah. Because uh, the, the, the shots aren't working. They're not. Okay. Says they're not. Paul, thanks for your call. Paul says they're not working. He's, you know, he's talking about, you know, this is a propaganda. He's cited this book, COVID-19 and the Global Predators. I haven't, haven't heard of that book yet, but he's piqued my interest. Maybe I need to check that out. Let's jump on another call here with Jay. Got a line open at 866-34-TRUTH, 866-348-7884. Seven eight eight four Stu Epperson in for my good buddy Dr. Michael Brown on the line of fire. Jay, you're on the line of fire. Go ahead, sir. Hey, Jay, jump on in here. I think you want to talk about this NFL thing. Jay, okay, we got a connection here. Maybe a bad connection on his part. Jay, are you there? Let's pop him back on hold, Grayson. Check and see if he's there on your side, and I'll talk to Elizabeth who wants to make a comment, too, maybe on both topics. I'm trying to give these doggone Wake Forest Duke tickets away. The game sold out. I want to send a couple listeners. I got two tickets here. We'll leave them right outside. We're two miles from the Lawrence Joel Coliseum, and it's Coach K's last time coaching there, but I just got a headline from my brother-in-law. Listen to this, guys. This is breaking news from Jeff Borzello, ESPN staff writer. Duke basketball coach Mike Krzyzewski is missing, missing the game. Versus Wake Forest tonight at 7 o'clock with a non-COVID illness. So it will be the last time a Coach K coached team. Duke team will play in the Joel, coached by him, even though he won't be there tonight. Interesting. Just got this. That's a non-COVID related illness. But assistant head coach John Shire, I believe he's taking over too for K next year, will serve as the acting head coach for Wednesday's game. That's tonight, 7 o'clock. I'm holding two tickets. Game sold out, but I got you covered. If someone wants to go and you got a good answer to to solving the world's problems today on the line of fire with Stu Epperson in for Michael Brown. Let's jump over and talk to Elizabeth. Elizabeth, thanks for calling in. Hey, I was calling regarding the uh, vaccination card or the negative test to get into weight. Yeah, big game tonight. Yeah, they just dropped this on this, this on us uh, about two or three days ago, and some people are upset. You know, season ticket holders looking forward oh, yeah. to this game, and maybe they have a religious exemption or – Maybe they maybe the vaccinations trigger a allergy and they're, and they're afraid or or maybe someone with their same DNA uh, suffered greatly from a vaccination and they're very healthy and they I don't totally want to you know they don't want to go now they can't they're holding sitting on expensive tickets and they can't go. That's one issue. I think the other issue, in my opinion, is um, there's many people who are coming down with COVID who are vaccinated. So you're really setting up a false sense of security when you allow people in who have a card um, and are vaccinated because they may actually have COVID or not. You don't know. Um, 
part of me says they're really no better off than the rest of us, and maybe yeah. a non-vaccinated person is safer because they're making yeah. us test before we go in. Yeah. But my final point is that um, I don't think the vaccine is 100% guaranteed you know, to work. And the other point would be that the testing is valuable, valuable as well. So I just don't understand the nonsense. Yeah, interesting. Yeah, it, it is really – look, look. <laughs> listen, I'm all about – I'm all about caution. I'm all about being careful. I'm all about protecting, especially the more vulnerable among us. Right. I'm just trying to have a conversation, especially with people, some people with some pretty strong faith convictions. Right. And, and, and well, by, the by, by the way, it's, inter- it's interesting. It's interesting, Elizabeth. Don't we always talk about, like, at what point does your passion for a sport and your faith, like, you know, am I going to go to church Sunday morning? Or am I going to go to my kid's ball game, right? Like, at what point do we have this conflict? Well, this is putting a different kind of of conflict, catch-22 for some people. And But I yeah. really appreciate your call, and I think you made some good points. Let's see what some other folks think, okay? Uh, can I say one more thing? Yes, ma'am. So the point also is, is if you are vaccinated and that does work, then why are you worried if somebody's not vaccinated is sitting right by you? You know, wow. if you protect yourself, then you're yeah. protected. Yeah. And, and they're also, by the way, requir- requiring inside the building mandatory mask wearing for everybody as well, oh, which boy. someone asked me earlier. They say, well, look, if I show a negative test and I show my vaccine card, why am I wearing yeah. a mask? But, exactly. you know, but again, yeah. they're just, you know, I guess trying to be careful and, and then. There's some no. Christians that are saying, hey, if you don't wear a mask and if you don't get vaccinated and if you don't do all this stuff, then you're not loving your neighbor. You're in sin. Is that yeah, yeah. going too far? Someone help me out on all this. Elizabeth, Thank God you. bless you. I appreciate your call. Thank you. All right. Bye. 866-34-TRUTH. 866-348-7884. Hey, let's turn over all of these dying inner cities that have been run by the same politicians for decades and they only get worse. What if we turn it over to the NFL? They're about winning. They're firing coaches and aren't aren't making it work. Let me know what you think and who wants these two Wake Forest Duke tickets to the game tonight with a special caveat, 866-34-TRUTH. Hi, I'm Rob West with a Money Wise Minute. Millions of dollars in life insurance benefits go unclaimed each year because no one knows about them. Sometimes paperwork has been mislaid and named beneficiaries may be unaware of a long-forgotten policy. If you've had a relative or close friend pass away and no one knows about any insurance, check the online Life Insurance Policy Locator Service. It's run by the National Association of Insurance Commissioners. To use it, you'll need the deceased's social security number and some other information. Just search this phrase online, Life Insurance Policy Locator Service. And please, if you have life insurance, don't keep it a secret. Let your executor or someone else know where to find the paperwork once you pass away. The Money Wise Minute is sponsored by David Belk of Carolina Financial Advisors in Greensboro. For a complimentary consultation, contact him at moneywise.org slash David Belk. Welcome to A Minute with Ashley T. Lee. Did you know that the eyes of the Lord range to and fro throughout the earth? What do you think he's looking at? Do you think he's looking for entertainment? Or maybe he's looking to see who is messing up. Actually, the Bible tells us that he's looking to strengthen ones whose hearts are committed to him. So is your heart committed to God? Let's look to see about the heart of God so that we can get knowledge and encouragement. In 2 Chronicles 16, it says, For the eyes of the Lord range to and fro throughout the earth to strengthen those whose hearts are fully committed to him. After hearing these words, King Asa did not choose to follow God, which was not good for him. Have you decided what you will do after hearing that passage? Well, if you decide that your heart will be fully committed to God, you might think, well, why would I need strengthening? If you've studied the Bible at all, then you will see that there is a continual spiritual battle raging daily. In fact, Daniel the prophet prayed three times a day for 21 days before the angel Michael could even make his way to help. The spiritual war was so great that Gabriel had to come to assist Michael. That should give us quite an incentive to pray with fervor. Make sure to press on in your walk with God knowing that He is strengthening and protecting you. And remember to keep your sword, the Word of God, sharp with daily reading and listening. Make index cards with special verses that you find as you're reading. For more teachings like these, go to Ashley T. Lee on App Stores to download your free app. 
In 2004, Diversified Fence Builders opened their doors. Owner John Folsom and his team wanted to provide the triad and beyond with the best variety of affordable fencing for home, church, and business. Aluminum, chain link, vinyl, or wood. Diversified Fence Builders has it. Try the new Diversified Fence Builders Fence Estimator at DiversifiedFence.com. Good fences make good neighbors. Financing is available. Trusted for nearly 20 years. Diversified Fence Builders. God of light, hear our cry, send the fire. It's the Line of Fire with your host, Dr. Michael Brown. Your voice of moral, cultural, and spiritual revolution. Here again is Dr. Michael Brown. Whatever happened to common sense? Whatever happened to just common sense? I'm not talking about Trump. I'm not talking about right wing. I'm not talking about left wing. I'm talking about the fact that a little kid's going to be murdered, cold-blooded, in Chicago tonight. And you're not going to hear about it. You're not going to hear about rising crime rate. You're not going to hear about the smash-and-grab retail. City Journal had a big article that, you know what's on an incredible rise is thefts and violence at retailers by organized gangs. They, They crash the windows. They crash in. They make off with the goods. And guess what they do? They They resell it. And it proliferates their drug offices and their drug, you know, all that stuff and the money and all that. The the debt per citizen, the debt per citizen in Chicago is thirty six thousand dollars. You know what the debt for the number one debt per citizen city in America is New York City, sixty four thousand one hundred. If you just joined us, Stu Epperson in for Dr. Michael Brown, who's recovering, should be back soon. He can't wait to be back in the seat. I'm honored to be in here filling for him. I'm watching the NFL. I'm watching the news about on ESPN about them firing their coach a few days ago. And then we flip over to another channel, and they're talking, and uh, uh, people in tears talking about all the murders in inner city Chicago. It keeps getting worse. The mayor's doing nothing. And I'm just sitting here thinking these same voters go to the polls every year. The politicians get on the same party, and they say, we're going to do all this stuff for you. Vote for us. You vote for them. And what do they do? More murder. More drugs, more violence, over and over again. So I simply am proposing on this show to you today, hey, let's turn the inner city of Chicago leadership over to the NFL. Why? Because the NFL, they fired their coaches. The Denver Broncos fired their coach. The Bears, the Giants. These people are serious about winning games. And I'm serious about not losing lives. And I'm a Christian. I'm a citizen of this country. I'm paying money to the tax. It's not my money. It's God's. Do I not have the voice to ask for some accountability? What's the definition of insanity? We're doing the same thing over and over again, the same result in all these inner cities, and they yet keep electing. Who's running these inner cities? Baltimore. Crime is up. Poverty is up. People are dying. It's horrible. Chicago, L.A., New York. Who's in charge? The NFL comes in. They clean house. They put winning coaches in these cities, and the crime stops. Why not? It may be a little common sense. Are we, are we done with that? Are we done, done having co- collegial conversations about this? And I'm giving away two Wake Forest Duke tickets. The game sold out. It's tonight at 7 o'clock in Winston-Salem. If you can get here, I'll leave these tickets outside for you with your name on them. But you got to be vaccinated to go to the game, or you have to show a proof of a negative test. So a vaccination card. So people are upset about that. So I want to hear your thoughts on that, too. Do you think that's going too far? For this was just announced just a few days ago. Is it going too far for a school with a big game like this on the line to 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 suddenly announce that you have to show this proof to get in the game? Let's see what we've had Jay on the line for a little bit. We we lost him before. Jay would love to have you weigh in. Welcome to the line of fire. Thank thank you. Yes, I have I have very little respect for the NFL since they've become so unpatriotic. I got gotcha. you. I got gotcha. you. The, the name itself, National Football League, it, they should be required to respect the country. Okay. Now, look, Jay, I'm with you on the wonkiness of the NFL. I'm with you. Look, on this show, you've heard Dr. Brown talk about, you know, they're not friendly to a lot of Christian issues. But my point is they're about winning games. They're about – my point is is let's get someone like them – Let's get someone like Chick-fil-A, for Pete's sake, and let me use one that you're not going to be upset about, to run inner city Chicago, and maybe the killing will stop. Do you hear what I'm saying? I do. 
I do, and when you put it that way, you know, it couldn't be any worse. That's what I'm saying. I mean, look, you go to the, these NFL teams, look. They've got to field a roster that wins. They got to get a. They got to get good draft picks. They got to pay top notch people, coaching staff, front office, back office, general manager, marketing. They got to win. And if they don't deliver, they're out. And they're firing them left they're and right. And I'm sitting. Hey, I want to read a headline tomorrow that says Chicago fires their mayor. She's out because she's done nothing Man. for crime up there. I don't care. Hey, I don't care if she's a a, a card carrying member of the Baptist Church. And I grew up Baptist. I, yeah. I don't care. Yeah. She's she's not, you know, right. you bring a salesperson in, you hire them, they better hit their goals. They better perform. Or guess what? We love you, but we'll miss you. You know what I'm saying, Jay? In every profession except the government, that is correct. Well, that needs to change. <laughs> and, and I'm asking, and I'm saying, what does the church do? Maybe we hold these people accountable, you know, these politicians to quit thinking about yeah. right and left and thinking about doing what's honorable to God and honorable to the country. And and we, the murder's got to stop. Jay, thanks for your call. I got a bunch of folks waiting to get in here. I appreciate your okay. call. God bless you. Uh, he thanks. held on a long thanks time. For being there. Yes, sir. And we're glad to hear his voice as well. And we want to hear yours at 866 343. They got one line open, 866 348 7884. I'm trying to give away these two tickets, but you got to have your. Your uh, vaccination card, proof, or a negative test. Some folks are upset about that. What do you think? What if a religious person has all kinds of religious issues with this and they feel like they're big fans of the Deacons, they want to see the Wake-Duke game, but they're they're holding I – mean, I've actually had people turn tickets away. I wanted to give them Wake-Duke tickets. The game sold out. But they, they're just they're like, nah, I'm not going to fool with that. Not going to go get a test for that. Not going to – I don't have my vaccination. I have a religious exemption or I've got a – severe allergy to the vaccines and in my history and i you know i'm not going to do it and so what do you say to them what does a believer do you think that's good bad or is it protecting the people are you loving your neighbor 866-34-TRUTH i want to go to sean who's been holding on for some time sean thanks for calling the line of fire you're on the air okay so um, the NFL thing or NBA, whatever, yeah, I don't sure. think that should be. I, I think in the, in the cities, I think it's a little bit, it's more factors in it than just leadership. Um, leadership is one of the problems. I have a big problem with authority and leadership in general, especially with massive amount of people anyway. Basically, if more power should be towards the people, and then leadership should be helping, not controlling. I have a problem with control. And that's about as deep as I want to go with that. Other okay. than the vaccination thing, yeah. Um, I'm trying to send you this game tonight, Sean. Sean, I'm trying to see this Wake Duke game. I got two tickets. But, no, They're burning a hole in my pocket. But the one thing I do agree with is more power with the church doing things. Rather there you than go. Just having, rather than just having their services, you know, wherever the community is set, and then, like, the community is coming to you, yeah. and then you you know, get on the podium. Yeah, but, 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 Sean, just let me ask this question. Just common sense. I agree with you. Churches need to step up. Churches really drop the ball. Church needs to feed the poor. Church needs to get aggressive and, and get grassroots going. That's what we're called to do. What are we doing? I agree with that. But my, my thing is why year after year do these cities, the crime is escalating, the poverty gets worse and worse and worse, education's horrible, cost of living stinks, New York, L.A., Chicago, Philly, and yet people go and they elect the same leadership every year, Sean. I'm not saying, look, I'm not knocking Democrats. I'm not knocking Republicans. I'm just saying, dude, it's time to change. You are a McDonald's franchisee and your sales are in red ink. We're going to put someone else in that store. I'm sorry. God bless you. You're a nice person, but you're not running. I think, yeah. What's your take on that? That's my problem right there. The control. The control is the problem. We give control that are flawed, just like we are. I know they're, they're yeah. Selfish and greedy, just like we are. Yeah. And then we give them massive amount of power. So it's like, you just got to understand, like, if we can get greedy at such a small level, just think about it at a right. higher level. But that's and what they sign. They sign up to fix things. There are politicians who have fixed things. There are politicians who have Giuliani went to New York, and you know what happened to the crime? It went way down. I would be feel much better if he was in charge. And by the way, I don't give a flip if he's a Republican, an independent, or a Democrat, or an unrenounced, or whatever. 
My daughter's 21 years old. I'm scared to death of her walking on the subway right now. They're raping people in the subway. They're shooting people. And you know what the, you know what the leadership in New York City does? They smack them on the hand and put them right back out. And I'm saying, let's hold on a second. Giuliani true. was there. That wasn't happening, bud. I'm going to tell you, that's the cold, hard facts. But people get all emotional. We well, do. I've always voted for this party. Well, look, put someone in there who's going to get the job done and hold them accountable. But could, we do this, though? but could we do this, though? Could we just transfer that power of, I guess, NFL fran- franchise? Could we just transfer that power to good elect uh I want to. I don't want to say religious, but religious type leader. Why not? Do it that way. Why not? I, Why I not? But you know, that. yeah. I mean, all these politicians they talk, they 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 spout out about God, but we want to see them do something honorable to God. Okay, I want to see. Yeah. I want to see Biden yeah. and Harris stop the murder of babies. Every time someone tries to to stop abortion, they sue them. I want to see them yeah. stop yeah. abusing and 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 hurting people that are impoverished. I want to see them stop slamming marriage all the time. Okay, they they talk about God all they want, but they don't live it out one bit. You know what I'm saying? So I think nah, there's they don't live it at all. Yeah. So Sean, God bless you. I appreciate your call. We got other folks to jump in here. I I've still got these tickets for you, Sean. I really want to go to the game, man. I really want you to go to the game. What do you think? Hey, it's cool, man. If I get them, I get them. Man. Wake, Wake like Forest said, Duke. Wake Forest Duke. Wake Forest Duke, man. Tonight, seven o'clock. Duke, what do you think? Duke. <laughs> Duke all day long, man. Okay. All right. I got two tickets so, so. for. Transfer transfer of power to to the church. That's that's okay. How well, maybe that yeah the church. Maybe this is maybe this whole thing. Yeah, maybe this whole thing per Sean's comments is a wake up call to the church. Let's see, we lost Betsy. Call us back eight six six three four truth. Wow, what a conversation. Should we let the NFL take over the dying inner cities because the same politicians voted in by the same people and usually it's the same party are losing and people are being murdered. NFL. You lose if the coach loses a game, he gets fired. Let's turn the let's let the NFL run these cities. Why not? And who wants these two Duke Wake Forest tickets? But you got to have vaccination card or proof of a negative test to get into the game tonight in Winston Salem. Let's talk to Mickey, a North Carolina caller. Nikki, you're on the line of five in for Doctor Brown. Go ahead. Well, thank you, Vicky. Hello. Oh, hey there. It's yes. Sorry. Okay. Sorry about that. That's all right. I know this it sounds alike. But well, what I feel is exactly what you're saying. I understand the analogy that you're using yeah. with the NFL, uh, because of those cities that been in so much turmoil and so much trouble because of the wrong leadership in there. Yeah. And the problem is the problem is the Democrats lack they lack I mean They lie and lie and lie, and people are not using their own brain. <laughs> yeah, yeah, unfortunately. Yeah, they, they'll say anything to get elected, but then they don't do anything. When elected, Mickey, what a point you have. Or Dickie, thank you for calling. Sorry we had to cut you off. We had a break. More coming up, 866-34-TRUTH. God bless you, okay? Yes, sir. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. I'm Stu Everson. More coming up. A new resolution or a New Year's determination straight from the Apostle Paul. True Commentary with Stu Epperson, author of the book, First Words of Jesus. Here's my verse for the new year, 1 Corinthians 2.2 in 2022. Paul tells us his determination. I'm determined to know Jesus Christ and him crucified. The passion, the consuming determination of his life was to know who Jesus is and why he came. You see, he came as a precious baby in the manger to go to the cross, to wear the crown. He's coming again. After he rose from the dead, he will return, not as a little baby, but as a conquering king. My prayer for you is that you will experience Jesus Christ anew in 2022. 1 Corinthians 2-2 in 2022. That's a New Year's determination. True Commentary with Stu Epperson, author of the book, First Words of Jesus. Available now in bookstores or go online to firstwordsofjesus.com. 
There is nothing more beautiful, lasting, and resilient than a great wood floor. Get them for your home at Carolina Wood Floors. With over 20 years of experience, CWF is the largest and most reputable dealer in the Winston-Salem area. It's all they do. Carolina Wood Floors is dedicated solely to wood flooring design, installation, and maintenance. CarolinaWoodFloors.net or 765-0680. Open your doors to beautiful floors. Carolina Wood Floors. Hi, this is Sam with Masculine Journey. I'm here with my son, Eli. We're going to talk about ways that you can help support the ministry. One way you can go to smile.amazon.com. Go to smile.amazon.com. There's information on our website there on how to do that. You go to facebook.com and click the donate button, or you can go to masculinejourney.org and find the donate button. Masculinejourney.org. Or if you want to mail something in, mail it to PO Box 550, Kernersville, North Carolina, 27285. It's The Line of Fire with your host, activist, author, international speaker, and theologian, Dr. Michael Brown. Your voice of moral, cultural, and spiritual revolution. Get into The Line of Fire now by calling 866-34-TRUTH. Here again is Dr. Michael Brown. In certain cities in America that have been run by the same people, Voted in by the same people, crime rate, murder rate is up, violence is rising, poverty is rising, it is tragic, and yet we keep those same people in control. And it's it should be heartbreaking. I mean, we're as a believer in the Lord Jesus Christ, I vote. As a believer in the Lord Jesus Christ, I have I pay my taxes, and am I. Uh, it, it, one of my constitutional rights in this government, and I, and I, but I do it in a loving, gracious way, like in forums like this radio show, Stu Epperson in for my good friend, Dr. Michael Brown. I, t- I talk about these issues. We're exercising our freedom of speech, and we're asking some common sense questions, like why doesn't the NFL or, okay, to, you know, they've got some kind of wonky views and maybe not so politically, you know, they're kind of, they've gone politically correct. Some would argue, Jay said earlier, they've gone unpatriotic in some cases. So let's say why not Chick Fil A? Put them in charge of if you don't have a if you're not managing a store and it's not profitable and productive, you're fired. And and the reason I use the NFL is I just was watching how they're this is that time now they called it Black Friday I think last week where they fire their coaches they get rid of them they're done they're out and they're speculating the other guys are going to be on the chopping block soon in NFL in college you know once the bowls are over then they start firing them and so I'm just telling you. Why don't we do that and fire some of these people that are running these cities and let the NFL take over the cities? Just a simple question. And then I'm also trying to give away these two Wake Forest tickets. They announced uh, recently that you have to have a proof of vaccination card or a negative test proof to get into the game tonight at 7. It's sold out. I've got two tickets. I want to bless a listener. If you want to go, you let me know or let our producers know. And we're interacting on this subject right now at 866-34-TRUTH. We've got a few minutes left to go in the show, and I'm going to jump back to the phone lines, and let's talk. Andy, he's been holding on for some time. Hey, Andy, thank you for calling the line of fire. Jump on in here. All right. All right. Hello. Hello, Hello Andy. You? You're on the air. Um, it, it's An- Andrew. Andrew. Andy. Fantastic. Andrew, right. great Bible name. All right. Um, all right, great deal. Um, if you you don't mind me kind of being a little bit of a devil a devil's advocate, since I've been hearing this from my circles, right? Yeah, please be a devil's advocate. We like that. All right. So, one of the things I'm hearing is is that some people would say, "What's the big deal about requiring a negative COVID test?" It's not like these people just want to make sure people don't get it. And yeah, I got gotcha. you. Yeah. And another thing is that some is that people some people don't or ha, some people can don't know if this is like a religious issue because they feel like well the Bible doesn't say anything against wearing masks or something right so yeah this is just stuff I'm hearing no yeah so, listen and I'm so. glad you weighed in and that and that's perspective of a lot of folks and and and, and honestly to me it's not as big a deal as this other other people I was just a little bit surprised you know I offered these tickets to to uh, a pastor and he was just like a little bit frustrated by it, you know, just like, wow, uh, that, uh, you know, that this, this, um, 
this new rule. Um, other people are like, what's you know, it's not a big deal. I, you know, I just got tested the other day. I'll just take that test. I've I've been vaccinated. I've got a card. I'll show my card. So, uh, Andy, but I love that. Uh, I love hearing both perspectives. And today we're really just having a conversation about that, and also making sure that we're communicating how we feel about these things in a gracious way. These convert, by the way, these kind of conversations. Andy, thank you for your call. God bless you, my friend. Andrew, Andrew, thank you. These conversations, by the way, are simply opportunities to share the gospel. You're like, what, Stu? We're talking about vaccinations and politics and cities and crime. Yeah, because, what? and by the way, my bottom line with me, let me tell you my, my passion. My passion is sharing the good news of Jesus with everyone I come in contact with. And But these are relevant conversations, relevant in our culture. Everyone's talking about it. So guess what I'm going to do? I'm going to discuss this with my neighbor. My goal is to share the Lord with them. My goal with, look, one day when you die, whether it's of COVID or natural causes or whatever, hit by a truck, do you know Jesus? And if you're a believer, who are you sharing Christ with? So these are all opportunities, and opportunities also to show that we can communicate, believers can, from the pulpit, from the radio mic, from around the water cooler at our office. We can communicate with people who we disagree with in a gracious, loving way. And that's that's going to honor Christ, and that, by the way, is a great testimony as well. Joe? Dallas, Texas, you're on the line of fire. Stu phone in for Dr. Brown. Go ahead, Joe. Thanks for calling in. Hey, Joe, you there? Hello? Joe. Hey, Joe, we can hear you. Jump on in. I'm Stephen. I'm, I'm holding. Oh, Stephen. I'm Joe. I'm so- yeah. <laughs> well, Stephen, we we're, we're getting things right here. You, uh, Stephen, let's hear from you. Go ahead. What are your thoughts? And then we'll go to Joe next. Oh, yes, I'm just talking about what you were discussing earlier about uh, putting people in office and that don't want to do the job. Yeah. Uh, we got to stop thinking that we can do one thing the same way over and over and expect a different result. Yeah, that's a great we gotta point. got to put people there who yeah. is willing to do the job. Yes, sir. And that would be Christian or non-Christian. Yeah. Uh, they are Christian worse than people who are not Christian. And that's why, you know, that's so, why I told, you know, that's why you, you, you know, you may have a, a heart doctor who's, who's, who's pro- quite profane and quite mean, but if he's, if he's the best guy out there, I want him working on my mom's heart. You know, I may not want the okay, sweet man. Christian. I, I may agree. not want hey, I may not want the sweet Christian heart doctor working on my mom's heart. If the guy's not, you know, not as, not as effective, right? Correct. Correct. And so, and yeah. That's the same thing to go with politics, yeah. anything else. You want somebody there to do the job. If they yeah. can't do the job, you okay. need to put someone there who can do the job. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. God bless and, you, Stephen. Uh, yeah. Pre- pre- appreciate your... Yeah. Ago, yeah. To be... Uh, keep uh, God in mind because without Him, we can do nothing. That's it. Yeah. Absolutely. And you know what? Whatever, whatever striper flavor of the politician... God calls us to pray for them, okay? Consult the Word of God, First Timothy 2 and 3. We're to pray for those in power. And let's see Joe here. Uh, Joe, I'm not going to call you Stephen, even though I called Stephen Joe. Thanks for hanging on, man. Jump on in here. Joe? Okay. Hey, Joe, you there? Hello? Okay, let's... Try to get him back, and let's go to Luann. We're almost out of time. If you want to weigh in quickly, please do so before we wrap up here on today's uh, episode of the Line of Fire. I still have two Wake Forest Duke tickets. Luann, am I sending you to the Wake Forest Duke game tonight? I got two tickets right here with your name on them. I hope so because I got my vaccinated done. I've got a son who's got awesome. his vaccination done, and we are big time Wake Forest fans. And and I just say, people, quit panicking over this thing. Get a shot if you feel like you need to. Otherwise, God's going to take care of it. Just quit panicking, folks. Yeah, and I, and I like that word. No need to panic. No need to let the consumption. In fact, I was at lunch with some guys talking about this, and the guy said, man, I'm just tired of talking about this. I'm like, that's fine. Just don't talk about it. You know, let's move on to something else. Let's not make it dominate. But let's let's let the peace of Christ rule in our hearts and our conversations, not all yeah, of this stuff. I agree. But, Luann, you're going to put on the whole – we're going to put you on a brief hold. Okay. And we're going to bless you with tickets um, to go oh, to the game you. tonight. What's that? I said, thank you. God bless you. Hold <laughs> on. And our team is going to tell you our address, and we're going to leave these for you with a Christian radio card for you, too. And uh, and you enjoy the game, okay? God bless you. Thank you. I'm so glad someone won 
And maybe Joe is still there. Joe, are you there? Joe? Hey, Joe, you there? Okay, so we've, we're, we're trying to get Joe on the line. It's been an honor to be with you today, friends. Stu Epperson in for Dr. Michael Brown. Keep him in your prayers. He'll be back very soon. He's feeling a lot better. I guess the bottom line truth for today is going to be, yes, pray for your politicians, but don't sit on your hands. It's okay to demand accountability, and it's okay to expect results. And that's the you whole know, start of the whole thing with, and this is not a, by any stretch, I'm not sitting here with a huge commendation of the NFL. They've sidestepped before, and they've they've blown it on some issues and whatnot. But coaches don't win games, they get fired. Chicago, the crime rate's up. Let's fire some people. Turn You know, put, put someone, some entity like the NFL, like Chick-fil-A, like Elon Musk, someone in charge of these cities so the killing stops. I mean, it's one thing to lose games to get fired. If you're losing lives over and over again and crime is up and poverty is up and all that, and people go and vote for these same politicians that promise the world, and yet it increases uh, poverty, multiplies and compounds under their leadership. What are we doing? That, my friends, is bad stewardship. And if you're a Christian and even a pastor, speak up and encourage people to vote for people that will honor God but get things done and and, and, and work towards solutions to these issues. And that is the bottom line truth. And ultimately, I love what Luann said. What a blessing she is. She said, look, trust God and don't take these the COVID and the vaccination things and these conversations, don't let them dominate your the narrative of your life. Be defined by be defined by Jesus, who he is and why he came, and let him rule your life. Finally, my verse for the new year, 222 and 2022. First Corinthians chapter 2, verse 22. What does it say? Paul said, I'm determined to know Jesus. Christ in him crucified. Paul was consumed with who Jesus is and why Jesus came. Let that consume your conversation. Politics is a bridge to talk about Jesus. The COVIDs, the vaccinations, the quarantine, they're all a bridge to talk about Jesus. Use your social media to point people to Jesus Christ. He is the only way. He's our only hope. And he's coming back.